Okay, thank you, and welcome to the City Advertising and Promotion Commission workshop for uh, Jul July 20, August 25th, 4 p.m. I gotta change that date right there, sorry. Didn't get changed. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I wanna start off with Larry, because he kind of drove the farthest. Um, we had a great meeting today with Butch, uh, Madison, and Molly. Um, for Larry Schaefer, Larry, come up to the microphone, would you please? Oh, yeah. Larry is uh, a promoter. He's promoted a lot of concerts here over the years and concerts all over. A lot of y'all know Larry way more than I do. And Larry came to town today specifically to visit with us, talk to us. We There's a lot of stuff going on in the concert world and obviously here at the Odd and with COVID. And so I wanted to give him the opportunity to make sure that he, do you know everybody up here, Larry? Here. I actually don't. I'm, I'm looking forward to knowing everybody before they all get out of here, so. Good, yeah, and I would encourage you to do that and make sure you get to visit yes. with, every, with everybody. I love uh, to. Yeah, and so um, I wanna just open the floor up to Larry to let him talk about the shows that are coming up, the shows that maybe you, you're hoping to do, and kind of give us your COVID plan, because I think that's gonna okay. be something we're gonna wanna talk uh, to about. To give you a little background, um, I've been in this business for, my company's 50 years old this year, and I'm still trying to make it rich quick. And of course, I'm not gonna do it. Um, I've made a commitment to myself primarily to uh, come down here in Eureka Springs because it's always been a favorite place of mine to visit, to, to de-stress, to get away from things. But I fell in love with this town a long time ago. And with this beautiful auditorium here, to me at the time, wasn't being used enough. I decided to take a look at it. And uh, in the last two years, two years and a half, I've, I've brought in mostly sellout shows in here. And by doing so, I've been, uh, I've been laying a lot of money out to the artists, trying to get the higher level artists in here, to get, to, to, to get people in here to see uh, the talent they would not normally see that caliber in a small town. So that's, that's what, I've been dedicated to doing, and it's really working. Now, of course, the COVID situation has shut me down for a year and a half here as, it sh as it's affected everybody in this building. But we're gonna get through that, and my commitment to all of you in this town, I'm in this, I'm, I'm committed. And uh, I think, I, I, think I'm, I think I can make this better and better as time goes by. It's my intent to bring larger acts in here consistently. Now what that equates to, I have to, I'm the guy that has to pay them that evening. They're working for me that day. I pay the rent on this building, I pay the stagehands, the catering, the security, rent. That's, that's the risk that I'm in anytime I come in here. So I, I have to know a lot about the demographics we're selling tickets to, and I know pretty well what we're trying to, uh, to focus on. It's been working. Uh, it's been working from uh, Oak Row Medicine Show, Lyle Lovett, Steve Earle, Pure, uh, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. We've done well here. And uh, what that's done is to give me a confidence level that I can do better. Um, so my intent, and I'm repeating myself, I wanna get the most prominent shows in here that have a broad appeal. And when I come in with the show, it's my intent to sell every seat. I have to, and of course, if, if I pay an artist a handsome uh, guarantee, it will have to equate to ticket sale prices. There's no, way other, no other way than I, can, than I can do it. So a seat here that might sell in the back row of a big arena for $85, I might be having to sell them here for 125 just to cash flow the thing. So that kind of gives you an idea how ticket prices are formed. It's nothing about greed whatsoever. It's just cash flowing the event. Uh, I have full confidence with the help of you guys and the great staff. I can't say enough good about the, uh, the people that have helped me in here, Rick and the team and, and Ron have made it real easy and uh, pretty uh, stress-free to come down here and do shows. So that's how I kind of got my foot in the water and I'm here to stay as long as I can. But I can commit to you, I will make it bigger and better than it's ever been. 
And if I can bring a thousand people in here at my shows and get them to stay two or three days, dump them out on the street when the show's over and they spend money in town, I think that's going to meet an objective that you guys would want to see me come up with. So as I stand here, I'm committed. I'm committed totally. So I would welcome any question anyone has, but I'd first like to address before, before we do that, there's a sensitivity, of course, how we handle the COVID situation in a theater. And Jeff and I talked this morning uh, with Butch and uh, the venue uh, staff here about devising a way to make it as safe and comfortable as we can to get crowds in here. Uh, last thing I want to do is be responsible for getting someone ill in this building. That's, I don't want that. Uh, no one else does in this town. So the plan is right now, and it can, and it can improve. Right now it's in a work, a work in progress. We're going to set up a tent, a fold-out tent outside the building. I'm going to get professional staff to take temperatures before anybody comes in this building. Now that's the most immediate way for us to spot someone who may have been affected by COVID. Uh, I, I had my dose of COVID myself, so I kind of know what it's about. And uh, I don't want to see anybody have to go through that. With the temperature checks, we're also going to put signage up on both the entry doors on each side of the concourse that ask people to be considerate of the people in this building and to wear their masks voluntarily. Uh, I don't think we're at a point yet where we force people to wear masks. I don't think we're at a point yet that we have to see proof of vaccination. But I'm all ears. But in, the device that I want to use is the temperature checks and what equipment it will take to do that properly. Jeff and I talked about a little bit, and we'll, we'll, we'll refine that and define it a little bit later. Um, we can make this work. We can do shows here safely. Do I want the COVID thing to leave? Oh, man. Uh, it's been a year and a half since I've done a show. So it's made tough times for all of us. But I will do it correctly with the help of all of you and with Butch. Uh, we can figure this out. So with that said, does anybody want to ask me anything? Yes. I've heard so much about you, so welcome. I've, I've heard wonderful things. I'm glad you're back, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yes? Uh, <clears throat> are you going to provide the, the folks out there to do the temperature checks? Or? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, the thought is right now with Rick's idea, is maybe go to the, the fire department, get some of those. They have to be professionals. They, it can't be someone casual. Ha, I need somebody of authority or status, you know, off-duty nurse. And it would be a good idea, I believe, to have a good uniform security there to try to explain things. Uh, inevitably, there's going to be someone in the crowd who doesn't think they got to take their, get their temperature taken. But we're going to have to require them to take it to get in this building, whether they like it or not. If someone has a legitimate reason that they can't pass the test, pass the temperature check, well, I'll give them their money back. They go home. So I want to keep goodwill going as much as we can. And in, with the intensity and the excitement of a concert, there's a little more, people are a little more excited than a normal crowd. They get to see, you know, they get to see their, they get to see their star perform on stage. So it's a little bit of a different audience, I'm dealing, different animal. Yes. Hi, Larry. I'm Bobby Foster. Hey, Bobby. Um, I have a place in Kansas City, and just last week I was there, and I follow several of the convention centers and the Kaufman uh, Center, Midland Theater there. And right as I was coming home, I started getting 
emails and Instagram alerts that the way they're handling it, and I'm not saying we should, I'm just saying what, what I've been hearing up there, is that they are gonna require either a vaccination card or a negative test within 72 hours, and that you have to provide one or, one or the other of those if you're, if you're gonna go to anything in Kansas City at some of the bigger venues like Midland, Kauffman Center. So I'm just throwing that well, out there for, for what I saw. Some, I'm from Tulsa. Some of the major events in Tulsa are requiring exactly that. Proof of vaccination that shows the date at least two weeks prior to the day of the show. So there's time for the vaccination to take effect. Uh, we can talk more about that. It's just whether it's just whether we can keep the goodwill. We're going to have to be stern. We're going to we're going to make some people mad out there, and some people are going to drive away unhappy. I don't see how we can keep from doing that. The most efficient way, always though, is temperature check temperature check on site. That's the most efficient. Um, the other problem we might have, we will have, if we have to take the time to look at proof of vaccination and temperature check, it will mean we have to open the doors at least an hour and a half earlier than we've advertised. Because everybody comes at once, as you guys know. There's a line out there on the sidewalk and it's long every time we open the doors for one of my shows. And it takes time just to get them off the sidewalks the way it is. So whoever has good ideas, I want to hear them. Yes. Hi, I'm James DeVito. I have a restaurant, so I feel your pain um, as far as COVID goes. Uh, anticipating our folk festival, I'm going to try and see if the rest of the commission will agree that we put conditions upon purchase of tickets that masks be required. If you purchase a ticket that you'll have to wear a mask, you're in the unfortunate situation that tickets are already out there without any preconditions on them. So yeah, we would have to we would have to get on the websites and standardize our advanced ticket sales sooner than, than, than later. Right. We, we got to make we got to make people aware of what it is we're, we're going to require them before they get here. I know the uh, I love New York concert. They required proof of vaccination and a COVID test both before entry. Okay. I'm not saying go to that, but I'd like to see our commission require masks upon purchase of tickets. Like I said, I'm open to any good ideas. Uh, I'm open to any good ideas. There, there, in this, I think in this town, in this state, there might be some shock value just because of, hey, listen, I'm from Oklahoma. Ain't much different than Arkansas yours, okay? There'll, some, there'll be some people that say, by God, I'm not wearing no mask. And that's when we have to make a decision whether they get in or not. What, what do you guys, I'll, I'll ask generally. Melissa had a question. Oh, we just passed a resolution that in public buildings, city buildings, you must wear a mask if you can't prove a vaccination. Okay. So that might be an alternative. I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I'm I, listening I, to all ideas. Yeah, that, uh, you know we're going to meet resistance. Yes. Are we all going to be okay with that resistance? Because this is, is this, is this, uh, are masks mandated in this state or not? No. Or not, see? No. That's where the problem lies. Right. That's where the problem lies. Jeff, what do you think about any of this? You know, it's a, this is a tough area, right, because we absolutely want to keep people as safe as possible. Yes. Or, my question is, if we decide as a whole that we want masks at the shows, or would you help us to enforce that? If, if, they, if we decide as a whole, as a commission, to require masks, will you you'll work with? Oh, I'll us. have to. Okay, well, co just cooperation-wise. And look, we had a great conversation today with Butch, and and uh, we really it was fun. We got to talk about kind of some of the old stories, yeah. of, you know, around here, which was which was kind of fun. I would really I'd encourage you to visit with all of these. And um, I, I really was encouraged that I think communication is the key on this moving forward, right? Is that where our staff and you and your staff are all working together to make sure that, because COVID is, 
changing on a day-to-day -day basis yes. and rules and laws and all of that are changing. So I, I'm okay with whatever the commission decides as a whole. The, the one, we'll make that decision and we'll get it right to you the, right away. The, 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 one factor that we got to keep in mind, the first show, the ma major show for me is Robert O. Keene on September 18th. That's the one that's, that's coming up fairly soon. I say a lot of, there's a lot to be learned about everything that we're talking about, management on the crowd in terms of COVID on that particular show. We're gonna learn a lot. Mm -hmm. That's probably where we're gonna really fine tune what works and what doesn't. And if I'm gonna, I'd say I would be overly, I would wish to be overly prepared on that show. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still know that the temperature check on site before entry uh, tells us about everything. It tells us as much as it can. Yes. Are you going to be beefing up security? I'm beefing up. Certainly, I am. Yeah, okay. I have to, uh, because I, what I, what I want to avoid, is as a crowd on the sidewalk. I don't want to see a mutiny, and I don't want to be lynched. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I'll need extra security. Uh, the medical staff. You've already heard me define how I want to present them, pure professionals. Everybody's going to put on a good face, be friendly. We're going to try to convince people that the crap patrons, ticket buyers, that this is the right thing to do. And I think that, I think it's going to work. We've already, you've already sold how many tickets to James Earl? Did you, you Bob Earl, I've sold 600. 600 already. And we got capacity here of 986. I'll give uh, Robert Earl probably 10 comps. There won't be any other tickets given away. That gives us a crowd in the building of capacity, which we'll call 986. So in essence, it's 600 tickets and the show's a month away. It will be a, a sellout show. Right. The, the other great part of our conversation that I thought we had this morning, and the whole reason why, and we haven't even talked about this much yet, but the elevator. The elevator is really crucial because it gives us the ability to have more space, usable space for the auditorium so that when you have a show, we don't necessarily increase our occupancy, but when we got 10 or 15% of people that are normally standing up here, they're in the basement getting refreshments, yeah. uh, watching the show from down there, hanging out with their friends, and it makes this feel more, it, it gives us a little bit more space. Right. Well, it's a, it'd be a pressure relief. It's I mean, a, it's a definitely yeah, so pressure it, relief. It, it also eliminates our crowds in the in the lobby because they're going downstairs to get those refreshments. So I know it doesn't help us for this season, but moving forward, the elevator could really be a big bonus for us to keep yeah. that yeah. from happening. Yeah, we can make the crowds too tight. Yeah, we can make that work. Yeah, I think we can, we can make can, that work. I think well, we can make that work. Sure, we can. I I think we could possibly sell two kinds of tickets. A ticket for a seat here, or a ticket for the simulcast downstairs. That's possible. Of course, to do that, I have to be, I have to very much uh, devise a way to present that to the artists. Artists are paid, guarantee, versus or plus a percentage based upon every seat sold. So what I would have to do is build that into my deal. It's kind of a spillover situation. Those seats downstairs would have to be general admission. In other words, if you get in, you stand where you can. Here, I'll do nothing but reserve seats. Now, with the quality of shows that I got, got in mind bringing here, I think there's gonna be a smaller percentage of people that wanna give up this seat for Willie Nelson or Dwight Yoakam. They're more likely to stay, okay? okay. But, I like the idea. It just gives that ticket holder the opportunity to, to walk downstairs and It'll, have a little bit of elbow room. It also enhances your uh, your liquid sales, your yep. bar sales. It does. Sure. Bar it, concessions yeah. will go sure. way up. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. Any, we have any other questions? One. Carol? Uh, nice to meet you, Larry. Loved the Lyle Lovett show. It was just fantastic. I hope you can bring him back again. I'm wondering if you thought about offering, since you are planning for longer periods of time, mm -hmm. uh, a series possibly or ser several series. Uh, do you book far enough out for us to be able to sell like that? Traditionally, I would. Traditionally, I book 120 days and longer out. 
but with the confusion that COVID's brought, so many dates have been canceled, postponed, postponed again, that it's made it nearly impossible to put together any kind of series that stays glued together. It becomes fractured. And uh, short, short answer to that, it's possible to do that. So, so far, so far, I've just, uh, I've been on, uh, my, my philosophy has been one good show after the other. You know, it's pretty simple, boilerplate, but I would consider a series. Uh, post, might, post COVID. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get through COVID. Uh, <clears throat> I don't, know, I don't know that it's ever gonna go completely away. I think what we, uh, the, the method we design to manage the COVID situation as it relates to this theater is gonna be something that we probably have to learn and may have to, have to use elements uh, of it for years. I hope that's not true, but you know, I, when I booked this fall, when I booked the shows for this fall, uh, Robert Earl Keene, the next up for me, Marshall Tucker with the Outlaws, October 29. I brought in a comedian for Diversity Weekend with uh, whatever name, Feimster, okay? Fortune Feimster, that show's already sold out. I've, I've put my neck out on the line to try to help get something right. for Nancy's uh, Folk Festival for, I believe it's November 17. I have offers in to probably, I've got offers out right now into Willie Nelson and by the way, I'm not supposed to divulge this, so I'll take a chance. Don't get on Facebook with this, please. <laughs> I've offered a good sum of money to Willie. I've made a good offer to White Yoakum. Lyle Lovett is confirmed right. next year, okay. March 23. We got that one in the bag. And as I, as I stand here with you, I have no doubt whatsoever there's gonna be a time when I'm able to pick and choose the cream of the crop. What's that do? That gets us the cream of the crop in here for the city. It's a pretty big deal. If this is no small deal to me, this is a big deal. Yes. Yeah, I'd be, it'd be wonderful if we could revive the blues festival and have yep. two or three acts a weekend or over a few days. Mm -hmm. I'm all ears. Yeah. yeah. I bet that, you know, the complexity of a festival, ask Nancy. <laughs> it's not yeah. my art. My art is relationships with the major artists, mm -hmm. getting the deal cut, having them do an enjoyable show for the patrons. Hopefully I make a profit and, that, and, and on to the next show, the next show. Uh, I, did, I was the guy that did the Oklahoma Blues, produced it with my money, the Tulsa Blues Festival, the Oklahoma Blues Festival in Tulsa. I owned Kane's Ballroom for 25 years. And that real estate around Keynes wasn't so, it wasn't gentrified yet. So I had access to all these empty fields and empty buildings. And my Blues Festival worked. I did it two days though. I did Saturday and Sunday. I would have been ahead doing Friday and Saturday as I look back now. But I did, I did large numbers. But the farmers started relying on me to make it rain. Every time I do a blues festival, it'd rain like hell, okay? So as I got older, I got, my nerves got shattered. So yeah, blues festival, but we may get somebody else to do it for us, okay? okay. Let's just be advisors on that one. Oh, I got Nancy right there. Yeah, Nancy, yeah. I'll roll that one over. I'll defer that to Nancy. Hey, but, thank you, Larry. Does anybody else have anything else? I don't want to cut him short, but we do have a lot today. Okay, well, my heart's in this. That's We're, all I want you to know. Yeah, well, we appreciate you very much, and thank you for coming. All right. Thank you thank so you. much. Have a good time. Okay. Paradise update is next. I've asked them to do this in the workshop because there's quite a bit of stuff. And, of course, Madison is here and got her feet wet. And um, I'm going to turn it over to her and let her run this little boat. Well, we had Paradise coming on the Zoom, but it's not working. So um, they're going to be on standby. If we have any questions, I can go ahead and give Rudy a call. Um, so if you guys have any further questions after what I go over, any input that you'd like to give them, we can give them a call. Um, you guys should all have the monthly report printout. Um, I'm just going to kind of quickly breeze, breeze through that. I have some talking points typed out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this will be a report that we receive on a monthly basis. This is my first one. 
Um, let's see here. So essentially page two gives a quick summary of activities by Paradise for the month of July. Um, they provide this report around the middle of the following month. So we got this just last week, I believe. On page three, basically page three through 11 goes through social media. I have a couple of highlights here I'd like to give you guys. And it looks like we have around 23,000 followers on Instagram, which is great. Um, our total reach for July was almost 185,000 people. That's an increase of 14%. Um, that's also great. Going to page five, you'll see Facebook details. In July, our Facebook efforts reached over 600,000 people. I'm gonna skip page six. It just goes into detail on Facebook video performance. If you have questions about that, again, we can talk to Paradise. Seven talks about top, page seven talks about top performing posts. Page eight talks about our Twitter handle. Nine and 10 goes over some of our posts on each channel and gives an overview of each of their performances. Then page 11 digs into details on the website. <clears throat> In July, we had about 95,000 sessions. Visitors went, o went to over three pages and were on site for about two minutes and 40 seconds. Those are really great metrics. So on page 13, we start talking about PR. <clears throat> this information comes from a third party reporting tool called Meltwater, and it shows that estimated impressions at 311,500, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, 311,562,074 for an estimated media value of around 2.8 million. Two, yep. And then page 14 goes over the star report. This kind of really highlights our hotel data. The last page visualizes our tax collection, collections to date. Um, I can provide this via email if anyone would like this as well. In addition to this, um, outside of the report, I've met with Paradise for Oh, almost every day since I've been here. Um, I really appreciate them. I think they're great. Um, they have some great insight, some great navigation for the marketing efforts here. Um, I'm really trying to get my hands on the steering wheel quickly. Um, I love it. We're having a great time. Um, I can move into the brand shoot if that's okay. Yeah. So, sure. Um, can we separate the lodging from the restaurant collections? Rick will have that for us in the budget. Yeah, okay. okay. Yep. So, coming up, we're going to do a brand shoot with Paradise. Um, I'm very excited about this. This is going to happen around late September, so we're going to choose around four locations. <clears throat> we're going to highlight a few things, you know. Primarily outdoors, activities, cabins. We're gonna uh, highlight some art, some, some, some unique accommodations, and of course some family accommodations there. Um, we went out and took a look at a few locations uh, yesterday. It's great, I'm very excited about that. We're gonna do some lifestyle shoots. So uh, we'll hire some talent. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a larger production, but it's going to be awesome. We're going to use these for our marketing efforts going forward in the upcoming years. I think they're going to give us some great, some great media presence there. Um, in addition to that, Paradise has given us two blogs in the month of August. I believe everybody has those. They're live on our website. First one was a writer's guide to my mountain biking. This is awesome. There's so on much. The screen. It's up on the screen. Yep. It looks great. Um, there's, there's a lot going on with mountain biking in Eureka Springs as I'm learning. Um, I've yet to buy my mountain bike, but we're getting there. Um, <laughs> and we will soon, I promise. And then I'll be using this guide. Um, this is great, you know, it, it, I love to read these personally. I think it gets a lot of, a lot of media presence. In addition to that, we had the Living History, a tour of Eureka Springs Historic Hotels. That went live yesterday. Or, or, or this morning, one recently. Um, <clears throat> that one's on our website as well. 
it goes over, like it says, a tour of the Eureka Springs Historic Hotels. Uh, beautiful pictures here. It's a great blog. So we essentially do about two of these uh, a month. Hey, y'all, this is we've got some We've got some coming up in September that you guys will enjoy as well. Yeah, beautiful photos. And um, that brings us to our radio spot that Paradise put together for us. Uh, I believe we have that to play for you guys. This will this goes out or will go out to the Fort Smith area. So that reaches, I think it reaches as far as Tulsa. Yes. Uh, we've got hey, all this is Bo with a question for you. Why sure. do we humans think we have to save the fun stuff for the weekends? Well, I'm here to tell you that you don't. That some of the best fun that you can have happens between Monday and Friday, and the best place to have that fun is in Eureka Springs. Now, I know what you're thinking. Bo, buddy, some of us have to work. Well, I'm here to give you permission to play hooky and treat yourself to everything Eureka Springs has to offer. I'm talking endless outdoor adventures like hiking, biking, camping, fishing, boating, all in some of the most beautiful surroundings the Ozarks have to offer. Then there's downtown Eureka Springs itself with all its unique shops, restaurants, and galleries, not to mention some of the coolest buildings you'll ever see. I'm telling you, Eureka Springs is like no other place in Arkansas, which means there's no better place to play a little midweek cookie. Folks who live there like to say it's artsy, quirky, a little curious even. And as someone who loves going there, I'll just say it's curious indeed. Plan your midweek getaway today at eurekasprings.org. That's eurekasprings.org. So that's our 60-second version. We also have a 30-second version. Um, and I love it. I think it sounds great. Um, then I have some things that Molly, she, Molly couldn't be here. She is actually, I think, on a plane right now to Colorado, which we're all jealous of her. Um, let's see here. She's given me, do you all have a newsletter in your packet? There's a newsletter here. It looks like this. It's this That's it. cover here. So uh, Molly put this together. Um, she's great. She did a wonderful job. This one, I think it has an introduction to myself, um, some other things. This is the first one that there's been in a while. We're going to try and do this bi-monthly. Oh, um, cool. Essentially, this will update the community members about the events in Eureka Springs. So we're excited about that. We'll try and get that together twice a month. Oh, she did a great job. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? Oh, it's darling. It's so cute. I know. Oh, I haven't found it yet. Have you not found oh. it? You can have this one. It's on your agenda, in the agenda packet. I said, oh, yeah, like, near the back. Okay, you find it? No, you can have this one here. I've seen it. Great. I just wanted to yeah. follow up a little bit with the brand shoot, you know, the, and then you guys can look at this. But, you know, they're coming up with concepts, and they're kicking those over to Madison. But this is one of the concepts that I really like, and I know All it's in the back. difficult to, to see here, but... The concept here is that we have somebody on the street buying art, and they're carrying the art back to their car. They're trying to stuff it in their convertible or something <laughs> like that. And, and this is kind of some of the concepts uh, that they're coming up with. And you guys are welcome. If you want to see any of this, we have it. Okay. But yeah. you, can, you can flip here back Got and it. forth okay. and you can see some of the concepts. Uh, these that are lifestyle shoots, so we do need actors and we, uh, we do need um, wardrobe and some of that kind of stuff. Maybe. Just one caution. Um, you mentioned the end of September, mm -hmm. and that, which is normally bikes, blues, and barbecue time. So mm -hmm. almost anywhere you go, you're going to have motorcycles in the background, which is good for some of the stuff, but maybe not for every picture. So okay. Just to um, keep it in mind. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. I think we're going to try and do it during the week. Yeah, um, yeah. These will be early morning shoots before the bikers get out of bed. Okay. We'll, and, we'll be out there. Okay. And We'll be employing some locals with this or some of our local talent a little bit. We, that's something that we need Madison, but okay, they, are bringing, they are bringing photographers and some equipment, and then we're waiting on a list of photographers' equipment, <laughs> a list that they're going to provide to us that we'll source locally. Okay, and we don't fantastic. Have that list. We don't have that list yet. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Anyway, James, if you want to see any of this, this is some of the concepts, shopping in front of the flat iron kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they want to see it on show film. Okay, go ahead. In addition to that, um, Molly also has given me an events update. So, summer music series, I believe you all have this uh, handout as well. 
Um, she says we're halfway through the lineup. We have a show this weekend. Um, it starts on, it's on Saturday, it starts at five. And we have four remaining weekends for that. It ends on September 17th. Um, I have a question. Sure. Uh, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but I thought uh, the mayor had uh, nixed any uh, activities in the park. Just drumming. Just drumming. Just drumming? Just drumming. So what's the difference between a concert and drumming? Well, well they pack pretty tight for the drumming. He, he is allowing the, con the, the concerts to go on. Drumming's pretty much, you're standing right next to each shoulders other. Shoulders so. to shoulders. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you draw a crowd, they're going to be shoulder to shoulder for the concert. Yeah. So, he, he's been attending, and I've gone through the, have you, to the shows, and it looks like to me, for the most part, groups are staying together. They're, they're doing a pretty good job of staying together, and they're not, you yeah. know, and I think the concern is, is that drumming draws so many people, there's just not the space up there to, to do that. So, but we're continuing to monitor it every yeah. day, and we're taking... Uh, if, the, if the mayor shuts us down, he shuts us down. But at this point, he had so. Yeah, drumming in the park was my next point. Um, it's it's, it's been, been canceled. canceled. It's been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have folk festival. I believe uh, Nancy's going to talk about that in a bit. Um, we, that's can, we can just go right into it. It'll move sure. our agenda around a little bit. But this is a workshop, so if we want to just go right into folk festival. Sure. Plus, we still have Larry here too. That would be good. And, and yeah. there was a budget here. She did give us yep. an updated budget somewhere. I saw it. Yeah, I, I gave you a sheet with, with what I have budgeted so far out of what you've given me. Um, first, I want to go to the COVID stuff for Folk Festival, and I'm with Larry. I would like to have temperatures and masks. Um, I can get some retired RNs. I'm thinking an easy up outside the door. And also, um, when I went to Woody Fest, one thing they did ahead of time was they checked vaccination cards all during the day and gave people armbands. And if we wanted to set up an all day tent where you could check your card and get your armband, that's always a good thing. But you'd still have to check, check their temperature and require a mask. And so that would be a volunteer, you're saying that's a voluntary thing, people could come up and volunteer. Volunteer to show so their card knows. and get a wristband and say, well, I'm vaccinated. But you'd still need your temperature checked and a mask. Right. But I actually just, really like that idea. It's, like it's a nice thing and it was really handy at Woody Fest. And, um, at their theater, they'd only had quarter occupancy because it was in July. And even with quarter occupancy, an armband and people wearing masks, somebody sneezed behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the most awful experience I'd had in about 15 months. And it was like, oh my God. I, I, so I'm just saying, all these, all these things we do, there's always a, a fail. So, but um, I've got most, the music is all lined up. We have all of our ticket sales online. I'm more than happy to have um, mask required and temperatures taken on the door added to all of the ticket sales on, the, on there just so people won't be surprised when they come. If, if that's agreeable with everyone, I don't, uh, if we're going to do it, we might as well put it on the, the sales. We haven't sold that many tickets because we've just got them online. Um, Bear Morrison, who's doing the Thursday night Todd Snyder show, has sold tickets, but I'm sure he'd be agreeable to that that requirement too. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I'm I'm way within budget. You gave me money to put on a free Thursday night show. Bear Morrison is putting on a ticketed show that night. He is selling tickets, so he is bringing people to town. With Jeff's permission, I use that money to. Um, book a show on Friday night that we're going to use as a benefit for the Flint Street Food Bank and other food banks in the area. Um, so we're gonna do canned food donations, fill the bin at the door and take cash donations for the food banks. I also have a Saturday night show at Main Stage. We're setting up a stage down there. Um, Larry said it was okay that we had a small show opposite Gangster Grass. It's going to be still on the hill, which is out of Fayetteville. We're going to use that as a benefit for the Historical Museum. So we're using the money you gave me for a free show to do two benefit shows to benefit the city and should bring a lot of people into town. Um, let's see, what else do I need to talk about? Um, Marketing, uh, we've been talking with Channel 5 for some 15 second spots in the morning and evening news. That's going along really well. We need to produce a short commercial for that. They will do that for us or we can look for some local talent to do that. 
Um, either way, I, I haven't reached out to anyone locally. There's two or three firms we can. They do it for $500, which is probably what anyone local would would do it for. It will be a you know it'll be a short visual with a voiceover. Um, I've reached out to public radio stations in Fayetteville, Tulsa, Springfield, Little Rock, Kansas City, St. Louis, Lawrence, Kansas, Chicago, and Dallas. They all have very reasonable packages to put spots on for the next couple months during their folk programming. Uh, a couple of them said it'd be better to do five spots seven days a week, and they have really easy, attractive packages we can afford for that, so it would really get the word out all through this area. Um, what else? I've been talk I talked to the Gazette about doing some print ads, but they seem, I'm not sure how you all feel about print ads, but it, uh, it seems awfully expensive for the reach. I will talk about this uh, probably with Madison, but uh, I just, it doesn't <laughs> seem like it's, it's feasible. But everything is going really good. I'm getting, uh, I've got the posters printed up. You have the rack cards that we have. Uh, we have the poster here. Oh, I, I, did there's, you give you a poster? There you go. There's some here. Yeah, there's there's the poster for the it. Poster, uh, the face. Our Facebook is is live. Um, we've got it on the uh, EurekaSprings.org website. They need to update our copy and picture, but they should be doing that this week. Um, and we got an Instagram account set up, and uh, we're getting really good feedback to everyone we talk to. So I think I think everything is going on just really well and. Now that COVID is stabilizing, hopefully it'll start dropping and by November we'll have it under control. Um, but I think we have a really, really nice lineup and that I'm getting really good feedback from everyone. So uh, on these public radio shows, I've got um, a lot of them like KSMU, Mike Smith's gonna talk about it on his show. Uh, I can get Mike Shirky to do that over in Fayetteville and Scott Acock to do it in Tulsa. So we're gonna get a lot of personal talking up of the show over the next couple months once we purchase our ads on the on the radio station. So does anybody have any questions? My my concern is we are where we are today as far as COVID. Yes. Because of Memorial Weekend. Right. We have Labor Day weekend coming up, which is going to put us back in the mix for another spike. I, I agree with you. I think you're right. And we have a COVID rider that we can cancel mid-October if if it looks like the numbers are going up and this is not going to work out. So all of our con all of our artists have a COVID rider that if if it's if it looks like the city's going to shut down, we can shut down the festival. We can still do the we can still do the outside music and social. You know, in the park you can social distance. You can set up chairs. You can get far enough away from each other. But that doesn't bring in a lot of people. But still, you can do things outside. There's less transmissibility outside than there is in a closed building, but we're just, I think it's just a wait and see. We can, you know, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm more the most COVID cautious person you've ever run into in your life this last year. So I, I, I agree. We don't know if it's gonna spike again, but the vaccination rates are going up and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm very hopeful that people will get vaccinated and we can get this to where it's a annoyance and not the destructive force, you know. Um, any, any other? I don't think that the newspaper ad is worth it. I don't think it's two thousand dollars <throat> per quarter page no, ad. That's really no. expensive. <laughs> that's, that's, no, I, you know it's going to be on their website and their online thing. But no. I'm, well, I was talking to Larry right before, and really KUAF reaches a huge area it here, does. as does KSMU and um, oh, what is uh, KSMO over in uh, in uh, Oklahoma? They, they have a good reach and they're the audience for folk. They're the people Well, that's who, right. They got yeah. the programming to match the ad. Right, right. And, and we've, we've got the folk programming pretty good. I've talked to Little Rock today and I think we can get mentions on their folk show too. And it doesn't take that much if we, we're just persistently do these small spots. Most of them are 30 to $40 for 15 to 30 seconds. So they're, they're very reasonable spots and they'll give us packages, deals on that and put the information on the websites. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, that's, that's all I have. I think it's all going wonderfully. And, uh, I, I think that's, they've got the budget and like I say, we're way under budget and also on Arkansas on the barefoot ball, we should 
get all of our money back that we've invested, as probably the Sunday night show will probably get all your money back. Um, the other two are the ones that we're doing as benefits for the food bank and the historical museum. So we, the town will get the money back from That's that. That's a great idea, Nancy. I'm okay. glad that you all right. That. Any questions? No, just thank you. Yeah, You're kind of having sex. Oh, yeah. great okay. job. Hey, I'm, I'm yeah. trying. Okay. Thank, thank all right. Thank you all. Yeah. And I will be out of town the next, I'll be at the Folk Festival over in Fayetteville the next few days, but I'm handing out rack cards, so I'll be working. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, and I'll be on top. Now, I we don't want you to have fun. We want you to work. <laughs> oh, I always am. Have fun when I work. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, you all. Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, so let's talk about the auditorium because that was kind of, uh, we, the city council had a meeting today. Uh, we do have numbers. That's this Nabaholtz packet that you guys have mm -hmm. here. Um, and I'm going to ask the city council people and uh, Madison to help me uh, with this because it's, there's a lot to it and there's a lot of kind of numbers. So um, the city has gotten bids to do um, two projects. One of them is um, for the... What's Dwayne's apartment? Park uh, the the public, uh, work. Public, public Works, works building. Public Works building, and then also the improvements here to this building. And now the improvements here are the elevator and the restroom and the basement. And what would happen is, is people would be able to come over here on First Street, and they would be able to come in in a wheelchair and come into the elevator and go down into the basement. And then there would be a handicap accessible restroom that restroom, if you're facing the concession area, my understanding is, is it would be all the way to the left in that corner. It was originally scheduled to be towards the right of the concessions, but because that, that area didn't work, Nabaholds made a recommendation to move the restroom to the other side. Um, the great part about that is that as we move forward with concerts, it gives us the ability to spread our wings a little bit. It gives us the ability to do conferences. I, I mean, I could really see us doing a wedding conference here, which would be great for our community and our town, a mountain biking conference where people can utilize that space. It's a great way for us to, to work towards a auditorium that is self-sustaining. Right. It's also a great, uh, Madison and I have had great conversations about the ability, we want to have the ability, we need to go out and entice more corporations that want to come to Eureka to do their little corporate events or right. retreats or whatever. This gives us more ability than ever before to do that. Small uh, trade shows too, down in the basement. Trade oh, yeah. shows, all of that stuff, we, mm -hmm. we gain that uh, ability right away and then we're handicap accessible, which, which would be, which would be right. great. Now, the cost, the cost to do that, as you see is, and there's a lot of information here, you, ju you just have to tell me and interrupt me where you want more information, but you can see there's a full breakdown of all the costs well, here. Let me ask you a question on the elevator. Sure. Does it come up to the mezzanine? No. No. Nope. And the question is, why not? It only act, it only accesses from the first street to the to the basement. Okay. It yep. doesn't come up to this level. Okay, so, so now we're tasked with getting handicap from. Well, we still have our handicap issue, which I think we've got a maybe. A, is that what this is? The ramp. Yeah, the ramp. The ramp. Is that we still have our handicap people mm -hmm. coming in. I'm waiting on a bid for the to replace that to junk it's, it's at the door. And then this other ramp here, which would give us the, the ability to come in on the side over here as well. So the only way that elevator, I think, ever comes to this level is if we build this level all the way to the, because that elevator is in the back. It's in the very far back corner. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I believe Butch, a couple years ago when we were discussing doing this, that was he got, I don't know, bids or whatever, but it, it was the cost and it was almost unfeasible to do, to, we'd have to almost do two of them. So this is just an old building and they were not handicap accessible back then, unfortunately. So the cost to do this is $363,000, some change there. Mm. Um, Nabaholtz, if if both of these projects are done at the same time, and they will be because the city has already approved them, well, we will get a, a discount of 69000 basically around $70,000 on our project, and they get a discount on their project of 74000 So there's a, there's a substantial savings, and the city council has already approved these two projects. What Butch has asked us to do is to fund 75% 
of this 293,000 for the elevator. Do we have a few years to pay it off? We, we do. Okay. So we don't have, because obviously we can't do that with no. one check. We, that would, <laughs> but I asked Lonnie and had a great conversation with Lonnie and I said, can we pay this out? And he agreed to five years. Is that? Okay. Yeah. Yep. They'll draw up a contract between us and them and we'll pay this out over five years. And that was roughly, Madison, you have those numbers. Um, a five year plan is $44,084.25 a year. <laughs> so that's what our portion would be. Right. Well, I have a question for both Bobby and James because you're long timers. Wasn't the basement really utilized for a long time? No. Okay. Because. It's hardly, ever, it's hardly ever been. No, utilized. 20 years before. What? Well, 20 years? So in 2000? Yeah, before that. Was it utilized? Not to my Butch, knowledge. Butch said it was. Bobby? The only thing I really remember as a young girl growing up here was I took ballet lessons in there. Mm -hmm. And there was roller skating, I know. I don't remember roller skating. Oh. I remember my mother played basketball down there. That was yep. the gym. Yep. But I don't. I've owned Mud Street now for 20 years, okay. and to my knowledge, nothing has gone on the 20 years since I've been back home, right. but I was gone for 20 years, right. and so what happened during that 20 years, I don't know. Right. Well, I've been here 35, and I can't yeah. tell you anything of any consistency okay. that occurred. Yeah. Oh, I just said, sorry to interrupt you, Jane. Yo. Well, they did the dinner theater with Janet Alexander down there Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and it seems like there was, oh, they did, uh, Ron did the, some music down there that didn't work, but there, was a, there, were, there were things that happened down there. The one that went the most was when Janet Alexander did dinner theater down there all the time. Okay. Well, Butch, Butch elaborated that it was at one time fairly well used, and yeah. I guess our plan for the city, and, and I'm 100% behind it, is that to utilize this building, and I think we can utilize it in a lot of ways, and we've got Madison who has experience in conferences and trade shows, and Molly's just a live wire, and I think her education is we really need to start utilizing this building. Larry is a perfect example of what he can do, and I really want to see us move forward. I, I remember having an HTC conference down there and getting it a little less dreary and AD accessible, I, I just, I, th I think it's time. I, I just think it's time we move forward and start doing different things and utilizing some of the jewels we have. So there is a budget here that Madison made up and I've asked her to put together a five-year plan. Now, th so this is just the surface of the five-year plan, but, and so Nabaholt's here, our part would be $220,000 which would mean we would be paying roughly 44000 a year for five years to pay them back. Um, but that, that is just the elevator and the restroom and a few renovations down there. We still would have to do an audio-visual renovation there where uh, people can go down there and there's a bigger screen and some sound system. And, uh, we've, we're estimating, now we, these are not set numbers, but we've estimated that's twenty dollars to $30,000. Of course, there's other additional work that has to be done down there. You guys have been down there. There's quite right. a bit of overall work around the auditorium. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, the other thing that we have to do, which is not on this, and we don't have a quote or a bid for it yet, and that is our fly points. We talked about these several times over the last year, but we have to have fly points in here so that we can fly lighting and sound. Mm -hmm. And those, so we, we have to have a beam engineered to put across the top, and Ron's been working on that. Ron, where, do we know where we're at on that? Is there any update at all on the? Um, actually, yes, I just gave the plans to Neville. The uh, original contractor that we uh, gave the plans to has retired. Okay. Uh, Neville has it in their hands. They're gonna be communicating with Bill. And we'll set up a meeting next week to where I can take them up into the attic so they can see it, get a visual, and then they'll have a better idea of what they need to do. So okay. that's where it stands right now. All right. Okay, any other, because this is our workshop, any other auditorium stuff anybody wants to, because we're running out of time. Yep. 
Okay, so we'll bring that back up enough. Um, we have an update for Festival of the Arts. Carol, you've been going to the Festival of the, to the Arts. Meetings, yes. Meetings. Sandy, Sandy wasn't able to be here today. She's involved in a, a meeting uh, with the state uh, regarding the arts, and she has, asked me just to pass this information along to you. Um, in looking at the year upcoming, the Arts Council's recommending a few uh, modifications to their original plan. Uh, this does have a lot to do with the resurgence of the, of the COVID Delta. Um, anyway, uh, they do want to stick with their original plan to emphasize more year-round arts programming and to also focus on public art, um, particularly our local artists. Um, so uh, to let you know, um, certain events that they had hoped to do were, were, were done to, to bring crowds. And so what they've decided to do now is put a hold on those particular applications possibly till next year, and then these are the things they're proposing to do now. Um, they want uh, the all public uh, outdoor, small safe outdoor activities and developing year-round arts program. Um, these four projects have been approved to go this fall and the budget we've already approved will pay for them. Uh, we're going to upgrade and repair the music park at the Rainbow Stairs mural, um, there will be a new mural that'll be by the New Delhi. It'll be another Rainbow Stair mural. At Harmon Park, there'll be an art, uh, art trail installations with local artists, and you have some pictures in the packets of some of those things that will be installed. And then um, they're working with the retailers in town on the Eureka Springs Enchanted Fairy Doors, which may end up running into the Christmas season as well. Um, the first three installations that I mentioned are planned with small, uh, small public reveals, um, an event that will be safe for the outdoors but can be advertised so as people come to town they can enjoy these events. Um, they've also gotten a, a really incredible um, bid from Edward Robinson and uh, we all know his incredible work here and the great work he did for the CAPC. One um, of the things he's talking about doing would be two web-based, interactive, augmented reality, virtual trail mapping projects. They would feature the following um, items in town. The Eureka Springs Springs, there's lots of them. Uh, the Eureka Springs Public Art and Ghost Signs, and those would be kind of a project done at the same time. Each map will feature 25 minimum, 50 maximum springs and public art installations. And they will be designed as web and mobile friendly. So people can be on their phones, they can be wherever they want, and they can go and be part of these public installations. Uh, the concept provides a base for more interactive and augmented reality ways for visitors to access and experience the plentiful creative and artistic assets of Eureka Springs. It also encourages people to use the trails in a different way. Um, Edward's full proposal is attached to, at the back of this packet, uh, and I would really encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, the second thing is a web-based Eureka Springs spirits and culinary project. Um, I'm really grateful that the Arts Council has really been looking at our restaurants and culinary as part of the great arts that we have here. Uh, they plan to do a digital passport which will feature signature cocktails and brews available around town with a backstory about the cocktail or a spirit, as in haunted or alcoholic, factoid about some of the buildings where the establishment is located. Restaurants and eateries will be featured in uh, promoting a unique offering from that restaurant. The concept could include short videos done by the chef or owner. A Taste of Eureka promotion can be added at any time to promote visiting the restaurants and receiving a bonus of a complimentary cocktail dessert appetizer or whatever the restaurant may choose to decide. Um, we would, they would be working with Paradise on this project and they have been talking about how they would work it. Um, 
I personally like that they were thinking ahead about how their original budget and ask could be morphed to better fit what may be happening this mm -hmm. fall. Um, and I think it's kind of a really interesting template. Um, you can look at the budget that they've got um, for the, the um, new things they want to do, what you might see on the augmented reality tour. I think this is a picture of one of the, the springs and a ghost sort of appears in it as you're <laughs> viewing the spring. So he's not there until you hold your phone up. Um, I think it'll, it'll be something that young people, kids, families will find really, really fun. Um, so I think that's probably everything. Oh, you know, I had mentioned a couple of weeks ago the lightning bugs project that, that this man had decide, designed in town, Tom Flynn. And uh, they are these really neat sculptural um, uh, lightning bugs that can be installed. And they were thinking possibly in Basin Park, which would give us a little added security uh, might help us a little bit with some of the safety issues on the darker parts of the park, even in the daytime. It can be very dark up there. Um, so that would be part of this project as well. And the budget, you know, we, we will probably need to come up with some uh, other money for the projects, but I, I think especially that spirits one might really be appealing to our collectors. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any questions for, from anybody? We just can't offer free drinks. We understand. Got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the last thing I have for the workshop is that we actually had um, a, a really great uh, meeting and conversation with uh, Rock Hill Studios. I don't know if Rock Hill Studios is in, based in uh, Fayetteville. And uh, they produce short films and films, and they work closely. They were actually um, instrumental in helping um, HBO come to Fayetteville. They, they worked to see that production come. And um, anyway, so we have been talking to them um, on and off. I have been for the last year saying, hey, Eureka is a place we should film. And now we actually have the potential of a uh, limited series coming to Eureka where it's filmed here in Eureka. Ooh, wow. um, this, is fa this is fantastic. So this is, it, it's not in stone, I don't want anybody to think this is done deal yet, but we, but it is, uh, we are working with the Film Commission um, out of Little Rock and the Film Commission out of Northwest Arkansas, Rock Hill Studios. We've had good meetings already with Butch uh, and Sandy to start this process, okay? Wow. Uh, my understanding is the overall budget's about $8 million, and about $2 million of that would be spent here in Eureka. So, um, if that happens, it's going to happen really, really fast. Um, we could see that project actually start uh, people here working in November. So, and it would run it would run into January. So that's a keep that under your hat. But we'll we'll see how that goes. Anything else for the workshop? If not, I'm going to give us. I know we're a little bit behind, but I'll give everybody a five minute break to shuffle papers, and then we'll get started. <laughs> I've, I've been whittling mine down. I've got like yeah. this much. Left. Okay. Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody to our City Advertising and Promotion Commission for August 25th, um, at 6 p.m. at the auditorium. Carol, will you please do the roll? Bobby? Here. Harry? Present. James? Here. Jeff? Here. Melissa? Here. Carol? Here. And we have one seat open. Thank you. Um, approval of the minutes. Thank you. Make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. I'll okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Does anybody have you looked over this to make sure? Okay.
Okay. Any no discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are passed. Um, Rick, you want to give us, share us where we're at on our budget? Sure. The cash balance as of July 31st was $905,148.25. Historical comparison to last year, our COVID year, tax remitted in July, which are June collections. Food and beverage, we collected $93,822, which was up $38,071, or 68.3%. Lodging, we collected $114,407, which was up $46,527, or 68.5%. The total collections, $208,229, was up $84,598, or 68.4%. Year to date, total collections, $909,625, up um, $413,076, or 83.2%. Going back to 2019, to more uh, normal, stable numbers, food and beverage, $77,126 which was up $16,696, or 21.6%. Lodging, $76,389, up $38,018, or 49.7%. Total collections, $153,515, up $54,714, or 35.6%. The year-to-date collections uh, comparison is $729,192, up $180,433, or 24.7%. Um, compared to our budget, um, comparing what we've brought in so far this year, food and beverage is up $18,822, or 25.1%. Lodging is up $39,407, or 52.5%. Total collections up $58,229, or 38.8%. And year-to-date total collections, $174,625, or 23.8%. So basically, we're about $175,000 above what we've budgeted so far for this year. Um, we had discussed maybe doing more advertising or something that's not really on the agenda, and I don't think, but um, yeah. there is extra money there. Also, Bobby had asked about the food truck uh, industry. Um, this is numbers actually through June, because I'd actually done this calculation before I did my finance report. But through June, food trucks were 2% of our food sales, which was $7,500 or $7,500 in tax collected, wow. um, which is basically $250,000 in gross sales. Great. Thank so you. So that is a pretty good uh, chunk of money that our food trucks are submitting good, it to us. Good for them. Have you done a projection of where if, if, we, if we continue to be up, let's just say 22 or 20 percent, have you done any projections of where we'll end for the year? Uh, no, because we've kind of, we kind of bumped up the end of the year a little more um, because we figured we would start out softer. So I will do that. Um, I, I think I'm pretty comfortable that we're going to be about where we're at now by the end of the year in, uh, ahead of wh what we budgeted. Yeah. Um, which, you know, increases our budget from 1.5 million to 1.6. So, you know, it's a good jump. Um, yeah. We've been busy this year, so. Yeah. Okay. The lodging figures uh, are very impressive. I think it reflects what Paradise has been doing for us. Right. And the city sales tax numbers are like 40-some percent above what they've been over the last 10 years. So. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's been a good year. Yeah. Move to approve the financials. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, finances are approved. Um, I had Karen scheduled for group travel and she sent me an email said she was unavailable tonight. So it leaves us to public comments. We have public comments tonight. Can you keep a uh, time for us, Harry? <coughs> All right. Hold on. Hello, I'm Bo Satori from uh, Number Two Fairmount. Um, just wanted to express a little concern over your big expenditures that you're voting on today. I do approve of building the elevator. 
Uh, I would like to know more about it. Uh, we've been talking about it for 20 years. Uh, I don't think that there's been adequate transparency with the community as to what you're proposing for such a big expenditure. Uh, we might need to spend more to do something better. And I would like that considered. Uh, also very concerned with the uh, public works building. Uh, I agree with that. It needs to be done. I'm all for it. But when they propose it on a Monday night, ram it through, and then have a special meeting on Wednesday at 3.30 to ram it through in order for your meeting here, then, then things are moving too fast. Again, the community is not able to keep up with the proposed million and a half dollar expenditures. Like I said, I agree with both projects. I'd like them to see them done, but I would like to see you keep more of a transparency with your constituency, which is we'd like to know what you're proposing rather than just wondering. Uh, and looking at the um, uh, 74th Annual Ozark Folk Festival, it looks fabulous. I'm great. Hope everything goes well with this. Uh, that means that next year is the 75th. I would like to see a lot more done for the auditorium. As I've said before, the auditorium is the number one responsibility of this commission. And there's lots of projects, as Ron can tell you, and anyone else with the community and with the, involved with the auditorium. So I would like to see you looking at much bigger expenditures for the auditorium, and let's have it at its best in time for our fest, folk fest, 75th Annual Folk Festival next year. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time. Does anybody have any agenda updates? Or we want to? I thought there was, uh, Mr. Meyer proposed having the auditorium director on the agenda tonight. I just have it under auditorium here as a whole. Okay. Yeah. We, when we get to auditorium, we can go over uh, that. And there's some papers here, I think, for that. Anything mm -hmm. else that, no? Okay. So old business, I uh, obviously, I asked Madison, she's been here, she's been here for a week. Um, we, she, I just, I'm giving her free reign here to visit with you guys. We can ask her questions. Um, and she can kind of tell us what she's been doing, what she's up to, and what she needs. I think she was going to ask us for a laptop. Oh. Sure. So um, we already kind of touched on this. I've primarily been working with Paradise over the last week and a half. Um, I think they're great. Um, I've been trying to catch up quickly. Uh, we've been officing out of the auditorium. We love it down here. <coughs> I love meeting the locals. It's great. Um, my main focus going forward in the broader aspects is going to be the auditorium. We're going to talk about that, of course. Um, the basement, which we've already talked about. Um, I think it's, it's, it's our missing piece. And I think that it's something that can drive us through the week. We have great weekends. Um, we're doing great. I think that there's something there <clears throat> conferences like we've already talked about, maybe potential film festivals, maybe competitions. I mean, the, the usage down there is, is vast. Um, that's going to be my focus going forward. I've given you a very general five-year plan with just some bullet points there. Uh, I'll be getting that into more detail in the upcoming months. Um, primarily, that is for the auditorium. I'm calling it my odd plan. Um, I'll be working towards that. I, <clears throat> I've printed out a laptop here, a computer, that I think would work for me for the next three to five years. Um, I just wanted to give you guys that. That's, that's really the only thing I'm, I'm asking for. Um, other than that, if you have questions over what I've done or what my plans are, please, please let me know. Any questions? Hey, Rick, I have a question for you. On this um, laptop and a mouse and that kind of stuff for her, we already have a budget for that to purchase that, or is it something we need to? It, it's already in the budget for this year. Um, because How much is there for Gina us? Gina had planned to do a new laptop because hers was out of memory. So okay. it's there. I don't know exactly what that amount is, but it is in the budget. Okay. Um, will you already? send over that amount, and Madison will send you over a link of a few things that she needs. Okay. And you're going to... We're going to keep that. This this computer here was thirteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. or fifteen hundred dollars range, right? Just right. To, just to, but I, I don't think I don't feel like the, since it's already budget's already there. I just wanted to com, com, 
the commission to know. Right, uh, and we do, we have an Amazon account, so if you just send me the links to what you need, I can order it within five minutes and it Perfect. goes right on the CAPC. Now we account. bought a, we bought an iPad last year, right? Where's yes. that? It thought it, it, it's at the office. Uh, we have, we actually have eight iPads um, and two uh, little Chromebooks as well. Um, so we, we actually have a collection of, at one time we had our app out in, on stands in the airports oh, right. and all. Yeah. Um, there's also an iPad that runs the security system for here in the office. Uh, I believe it's like a collection of eight iPads, if I, just off the top of my head, but um, it works best for the director to have a laptop. Um, we, we had bought a new desktop for, for Lacey when she came, but it's, it's hard for the director to, to have the stationary unit. The laptop works sure. better in that position. Yeah. Could we get an inventory of the uh, excess? Oh, we, yeah, we actually we have to keep an inventory so I can, I can print it off at any time. Yeah, if we really don't need it, we ought to sell it <laughs> or otherwise dispose of it. Right. Okay, anything else for Madison? Okay, let's go on to the auditorium. Well, uh, okay. I move that we approve. I don't think we need. You don't need to. It, it, it's, it's, it's in the budget. It's in Mary. the. There's already a budget okay. for it, so we don't. There's no reason for it. I just wanted to make sure we, we were transparent yeah. there. Yeah, we're we're aware of it. That, yeah. Okay. Auditorium. Obviously, we went over this Nebaholtz, um elevator project, and um, what do you guys want to do? I'd like to talk about. $45,000 a year for five years and how that might impact us in, in terms of what we're doing. I don't want it to affect our ability to work with Larry and do more shows here. Um, I do think we're going to continue to see really good numbers, dollar numbers. I think we'll probably have it in the budget, but I'm just wondering, Rick, if you or anyone else has an opinion about that kind of a hit every year for five years? Um, I don't see it to be a problem. Um, multiple years back, we actually made $50,000 payments um, when we had a million dollar budget uh, for the renovation of the auditorium. Uh, so I don't think that this $45,000 uh, would make that much difference, especially the, the, it, the, the increase that we're seeing in our tax collections right now. And um, just keeping our expenses down like we have been as well. And, and I think too, just the goal is to be self-sustaining here. And so the goal is now, I don't, obviously we're not gonna get there one, maybe one, two, three years. It might be our last year, but we're, the goal is to get this auditorium self-sustaining. It would make this payment on its own, hopefully four or five years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, have we given any thought to lighting out out where this entrance is going to be really good lighting because we've got handicapped people number one and as a safety issue particularly after concerts that's not included in this proposal but that is there, there's we we have a whole list of stuff um, yeah there, there, we're additional gonna have to things, other expenditures uh, that, okay that i just really done. think that's important because get her first yeah oh. bobby uh first of all i I just got these numbers at five o'clock today. Yeah. I would really like a chance to study them a little more. I sure. did not realize we were voting on this tonight. When I saw the agenda, I just saw auditorium. I wasn't sure what that was. I don't feel comfortable making a vote without being sure. having a chance to look at them a little bit and, more in depth. And to, to that point, we n no one knew because the city had a meeting at 3.30. <laughs> <laughs> and it went until 10 minutes before our meeting. Okay. So, yeah. okay. so they didn't approve any of this. And, um, and, and honestly, the, I didn't, didn't even know Nava Holtz was in town. So this is happening, I agree, extremely fast. Um, but we also are on the clock here. We, these numbers um, are only good, uh, did he say 30 or 60 days? 60 days. 60 days, so we have 60 days. So we have time we, we to have look at it time. a little more yeah. deeply. So. Um, the public works building we have been talking about and we've been transparent about, but these, these numbers come up and we've got X number of time, and at what's lumber is actually coming down, which is great, but all the other supplies are just going up, labor is going up, so it it's the reason we jumped, I guess, ju 
which jumped fast, is this was a good estimate and we're looking good. So I agree. I, I think I think we missed a meeting this month. I, I would recommend talking later that we have another meeting next week and talk, really primarily talk about this. Are you saying a special meeting to talk about no, this? No. Um, a let, regularly scheduled A, a regularly meeting. scheduled. Let's just talk about it at the end. It's at the 8th. It's, our meeting's on the 8th next month, so it comes, it's pretty quick coming up. Right. But I, I'd like to get get our opinions on this pretty fast because they do need to know. And, and one other concern that I actually spoke with Larry about today is um, when this work's being done, um, say it's on a, on, uh, they're doing this work when we have a show booked in here, we have to have some kind of a, a clause that, that they can't be down there jackhammering when we've got, because uh, basically when the band comes in, they're here all day. Yeah. They sound check. So there's got, depending on when this work happens, and it's going to start yeah. tomorrow, but um, that's just something to keep in mind too. Um, we will. Protect, we, protecting, you know, a, a big show that we've got in here that we don't have I, I construction the, going on downstairs. Yeah, I think the benefit to actually maybe being in a hurry is this, is that if we do get it approved, which the city's already approved it, so the project's moving forward, right? Right. Um, so if we do get it approved, it's likely most of the bulk of the work's to happen this winter. Right. Yeah. Which really works, if we wait 60 or 90 days, then we could be in our spring season, and that could be an issue, but... Um, I can't imagine, and we'll just have to work schedule, and that was the communication thing that I talked about, is that great communication will always lead to success. And right. so I think if we communicate communicate with the contractors, I think we'll be okay. One other thing you might keep in mind is just the dust levels. I know a, a good construction company is going to do that, but right. when you're dealing with singers, um, you know, that is, a, that is a thing that will cause them to pack up and leave. So right. we need to make yeah. sure we keep this area separate. When, when they cut the hole in the floor down there, it was a mess. Yeah, we, I, it we was just city them. workers. We, yeah. I, we could ask them though, when they start to put up some barriers, some vapor barriers, they'll put plastic yeah. in areas to keep it. Right. Um, and we'll make sure we they're do. not here on show days. Yeah. Yeah. We, I think we can work around that, so. Um, I'd like to add something. Uh, as far as I know that the that the CAPC Commission has not known about the elevator or, or the building at Public Works, but we have spoke, we have discussed both of these items in the council meetings for five years. So this isn't getting sprung upon the community. Uh, we've had quotes that have come in in the past to, for the, uh, for the, building out there public works for you know five hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars and then and quotes for this elevator we were going to have our council meetings down there is what one of the plans was so uh yeah it's i understand that uh, the the members of the commission here want a little time well i think what's new to us is just the, but, the but, monetary proposal and how much we're being asked for but we've yeah. known about the project as well for three years at least so yeah okay so do we want to wait until the eighth give everybody time to look at it and you, of course um, butch let's let's talk about a meeting at another the meeting yeah another meeting because we just we have so much especially with so that would be a Dodd special meeting show. yeah Next Not, no, just a, I think a regular meeting. The the odd uh, the first of Larry's shows. I mean, we have not talked about a staff. We need to talk about the concession staff and. They're, they're, the staff is working on that, so they're okay. behind the scenes working okay. on a lot of those okay. things. But my question is, I mean, our next regular scheduled meeting is not until the eighth. So if we want to have a meeting between now and the eighth, it would be a special meeting for the right. auditorium. So right. it's completely up to you guys. I'm available, and I will. Put that on the agenda if you guys want. I, I, if you don't, we wait until the eighth. I would like to because we we have just so much that can we can we really meet next Wednesday's the first. Can first. we do that? Next would Wednesday. that give everybody enough time is to there a essentially go meet with Butch? Meeting. <clears throat> we've, we've got a historical, but we've also got planning before that, so it'd have to be about two in the afternoon. Is that right, Ron? Well, if we're concerned about getting word out to the public, that's not going to happen by the fifth. Or what was the date? First. That's not going to happen by the first. The public's not going to know about it. Okay. 
So we just as well go ahead and vote on it tonight. Well, Bobby asked to wait. Well, I understand Bobby yeah. asked but to wait, but there's seven commissioners. Yeah. Okay. So would you like to make a motion? I'd make a motion that we accept the bid from Nab Holtz Construction for what was it? 293, 293 895. 293 895. I'll second that. You want to make that, hold on, the way you want to make that with the condition that we would pay 45000 a year until it's paid? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion on that? Uh, discussion is, like Mr. Meyer said, we've been talking about this for years. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The money's not going to change. If we delay, it it's just going to increase. Um, go on. You know, uh, I'll take my lumps as a commissioner that, you know, this has been in process and, and we're appointed and voted on by the citizens of the community to represent them. And this is a job that we're tasked with. So yeah, uh, that number is not going to change between now and any, any future meeting. All right. <coughs> Anyone else? If not, we'll do a roll call vote. Bobby? No. Harry? Yes. James? Yes. Uh, Carol? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Okay, so that is four, one. Uh, that carries and passes. Thank you for that. Uh, other auditorium business do we have? I know that they have been working on, and Madison, I know you had a list of uh, like needs as far as people and staffing, and, um, and we're, uh, Harry wanted to talk about auditorium manager. So we'll kick that over to you guys, and I know there's some paperwork here. Well, yeah, the, the, that's right in our face right now is uh, staff for the first show that's coming up. And how, you know, you're going to hire the security. Just the temperature. I'm sorry, could you come up to the speaker? Oh, yeah, sure, I'll uh, what, I, what I intended to mean, what I meant was, in terms of managing the temperature check station, I will, I will want and I will deliver whatever proper uniform officer in this town that's available just to maintain decorum, okay? Uh, I, to maintain goodwill, okay? Sure. To maintain goodwill, that uh, that would that would be something I would pay for certainly. Is it appropriate? Has it been in the past that we've had security inside the auditorium? Has it been appropriate? Uh, most of the shows I've had, Rick, we haven't since we haven't had any problems. This has been minimal. We, we usually have a, sorry. We usually have a couple of security. Usually one that stands by the bus and and one that roams the, the entrances. Once the show starts, they stand at the back or down by here. It's usually only a couple of officers, which is provided within the staffing agreement of the auditorium that we, in the use agreement, yeah. we provide okay. the staffing. Okay. And, and let me add, uh, predominantly, that gives, it's for visibility. Sure. It's, for, it's purely for visibility. Of course. Right. Of course. Thank you. No billy clubs. <laughs> so I handed out a job description for the auditorium manager. Okay. Um, are, are we ready at this time to, to, you know, start that process of hiring an auditorium manager? I think we are. Yes, I uh, believe so. Okay. I think we should put out an ad. ad put out an ad. And do we have an idea what we're going to, what this person uh, would make? I think uh, I think we should put in the ad what they what they want what they require. Are we talking Ask about them. a full-time position, a part-time position, a contracted position, an hourly position? Well, yeah, that's a good one. I, I don't see the need for a full-time person. Possibly a part-time person, but their hours obviously have to be flexible. They have to be right. able to work with Ron and the staff for whatever they need. 
Um, it's not a full-time job. Why don't we look I don't know. If you read this the job description, there's a lot in it. <clears throat> yeah, there is. There's there's a lot there. Let's why don't we um, just postpone this until the the next meeting and all of us really go over it and Well, you know, we really we need to. We need to do, I mean, we've got a concert well, coming up we, on the 18th. We have days. somebody in the audience that's got 20 years' experience yeah. working here at the auditorium, <laughs> so maybe we should bring her on staff right now. Yeah, for de she did the concessions, correct? Well, she's been involved with the auditorium. She oh. probably knows it better than anybody here or in the city. I mean, we have a show coming up. we got a lot to do. we got a lot to do. Yeah. So I don't see waiting for a auditorium manager to then hire somebody who's eminently qualified to be on 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 payroll tomorrow mm -hmm. so maybe we should consider that right now okay. if, if as you say we have stuff coming up quick She, she is uh, currently an employee on laid off status. Um, and, and besides just what we have coming up, um, of course the auditorium hasn't been cleaned you know, very right. well since we've closed. We've got cans of pop that are leaking in, in the concession center. Everything's outdated. The beer needs to be poured out. We can't give it away, so it all has to go down the drain. Well, I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to- Stuff uh, to be to done that she normally would do. To bring her back on staff. So yeah. can I get clarification? So um, Sarai is on, because that payroll goes through our office, it doesn't go through? Yes, it I goes through our office. It has a different coding. Okay. And actually, I'll have to get her with, with Jerry, the new um, okay. employment relations guy, because we all had to fill out new paperwork. So she'll have to fill out new paperwork, but she's already in the system. Mm -hmm. okay. Was she the auditorium manager before? Uh, no, that's not, that wasn't her title. <laughs> Reads or what her title was. Possibly uh, show manager. Front, oh, front of house manager. That's okay, it. I like that. Front of house. And what would what did we pay her? What do we pay? Uh, she made fifteen dollars per hour. Okay, thank you. Well, now Ron's got uh, oh. somebody that can clean this place before we have our first show. That's well, let, let's deal with yeah, let's deal on. with this other let's, one let's, let's, first. Yeah. Yeah, we why got a motion. You still got yes, your motion to bring her back. To yeah. The, why, why don't we do her like we did as a contract until COVID is over? I, I do want to keep her. I'm not trying to just and and let her take over like she did and pay her what we did pay her. So you want a second? Uh, I'll second. Okay. Um, let's just do a uh, discussion. Discussion. You want to just yeah. How how are her hours set? Why how were your hours set? Were they people just told you we need you to work the day of a show? I'm just wondering how the how we figure out your hours. It, there is nobody telling me what to do. I've okay. done what needed to be done okay. for 15 years. Okay. okay. So years. I just do it. I do prep work before a show, or work during a show, and I work after a show cleaning up. Okay, well, just what staff are y'all talking about that is discussing doing all that? Oh. Where's the staff? Oh, that, that we were talking about the cleanup? No, he said the staff is discussing all the stuff that needs to be done at the auditorium. Right. Well, we have- The new director? Yeah, yes. we have staff, yeah, Molly, Madison. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rick. What, what, why don't you just do this, Shirai? Just do your thing. Um, if you've been here 15 years, you're obviously trustworthy. You're not going to cheat us, and just keep your hours. She, she clocks in and out. Yeah, then that's fine. I mean, Can we suggest a start to... date of next Monday? Yeah, I would be glad to have her back. Okay. Yeah. So put we that in the motion. Yeah, yeah, put that in the motion so we have a motion. What do y'all think about giving me a little raise? Well, that, that yes, without a doubt. Thank um, you. 
you want to hire on and let us discuss the raise whatever at a subsequent meeting <laughs> whatever y'all need to do well let's let's work on the raise part pay at, at this rate but yes we definitely yeah. need to mm -hmm. discuss this i have one other question too rick i recall that there were some positions i'm not sure if it is this one that the state was interested in how we uh, called that person because they had right. set hours or not set hours. We don't want to get into that problem again. So um, how do we work this? Sarai is an actual city employee, okay. part-time city employee. So she doesn't fall under the problem that we had. With, that was under the contract Contractors. labor. Got it. Um, okay. when, we, when we would tell them they had to be here from 6 to 8 to do a show, okay. That under Arkansas law, no longer they're an employee, not okay. a contract employee. So we would so. hire her part time. So Sarai is basically a part time okay. city employee. Got it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So we have a motion and we have a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thank you and thank Welcome you. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your input and we're happy to get this thing rolling and get yeah. things done. So. Okay. Uh, about the cleaning. All right, we're ready. We need, we, need to, we need to talk about getting this place cleaned out uh, before Sarai even gets into, yeah. the, into the theater here. So Ron called several places, and what have we got? One, one outfit that gave us a quote? Well, it's kind of a changing process. Uh, at first, I thought we needed to clean the curtains first. Because that's going to release a lot of dust, and they will do the deep cleaning later after that. But after talking to the current people and the considering expense it's going to take to clean these curtains, uh, I think we're going to have to uh, treat the stage differently. We've got to clean every square inch of the stage, all the rigging. Um, we've got to clean the lofts out, and that's painstaking. Right, we've discussed that. So have we got someone that can come do that? Well, I, I, mean, I think we're going to put together a local crew because, like I said, we've got to cut the set up the scaffolding. We've got, to, we've got to wipe down all of the battens, all the hardware that's in the building. We've got to get all the equipment out of here. Um, I think we've got to treat the stage differently. Then we can talk about you know, the theater itself and the, the basement. But the most important thing is... And, and that, we might not be able to get that done before this finish out, but. Um, so I have a question for Rick. Rick, do we already have money budgeted for cleaning here at the auditorium? Is there already money for that? Yeah, we how, have how, an operations how budget. How much out of that operations budget do we already have for cleaning? It's whatever we need. Need to okay. use. I mean, we've only I, used like twelve thousand of our auto yeah. operations budget, which I'd was like, like to 40 maybe just make a recommendation that now that we have Madison here and we have Sarah back on staff, that we just turn. We don't have to vote to release any money here. The money's already there. Mm -hmm. We just need to tell them to 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 work to get it and keep updating us. Um, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what so we we'll, hired Madison for. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> the benefit of having a tourism director. She's in charge. She's in charge. Okay, anything else on the auditorium? Is anybody, anything else there? I feel like we, okay. We had some marketing um, request supports and there's actually two of these that are, I'm not sure, springtime in the Ozarks, but it's next year. I'd like to recommend, it's not until April of 2022. I'd like to recommend that we push that down the road a little bit. Agreed. And we let Madison kind of, when she gets more. And then we also had one for the, the cat house. Um, and it needs to be revised, okay? I'm just gonna say that. So I've asked Madison to contact them, to sit down with them, to send them over the marketing guideline supports, rules, because uh, they've asked for, I won't even say. So I'll come up with that. So we honestly have one marketing support right. that I think we should look at and consider tonight, and that, of course, is the museum, um, and the museum is doing, um, is this voices? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Y'all yeah. are more familiar with this than I am, so. Mm -hmm. 
And it's October the 23rd, 2021. It looks like they're asking for $5,000. And it is an outdoor event. Right. Mm -hmm. and and it, we don't it, have anybody here from the museum, correct? No one's here. But it, I, I know it brings in a ton of people. A lot of people from yeah. way, I mean, people drive in right. every year for it. Rick, do we have money left for this? Yes, okay. I'm going to make a motion that we approve $5,000 for the museum's tour. Second. We have a second? Uh, I'll second. Okay, yep. we have two seconds. Uh, any, we want any more discussion yeah, on this? what was last year's ask? What did they get last year? Probably the same. Two thousand. Just two. How much? Two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. Okay. And but what do we have left? Five thousand this year. What do we have left in our um, marketing support? We have twenty-three thousand left. Not counting Not this. Counting that. Okay, so we have twenty-three thousand. This would be a five thousand out of that. So. Any, well, I'm just curious about three thousand dollars more than than the ask for last year. I mean, that's more than double. I I read in the paper they're having some issues with transporting people. In the past, they've used the old Victorian lot, which is a mess now, and um, people normally would stand in that lot, board buses, go to the thing, spend an hour, come back. Um, is that? Part of the reason they're asking yes, for and, more, and also just <clears throat> getting the word back out that it's going to happen again. Right. Yeah, because yeah. it didn't happen last year. You kind of fall off the radar, mm -hmm. um, so you got to do more advertising to let mm -hmm. people know it's going to happen. And this is a fundraiser for the museum, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I think that's really important to remember too. What well, is it? We're... Three weekends. Yes. Yeah. Yes, this is not a one night event. This is three weekend event. Right. Yeah. And, and, and they haul bus load after bus load into the And the people come and they stay time. and they shop and eat. Well, and it also features a lot of our local talent actors yeah. and others um, who are really quite good. Yeah, it does. Okay. I mean, we're already funding the audit. I mean, we're already funding the museum. Not, not, not yet, yet. But Tim hasn't gotten me the contract back yet. No. <laughs> Technicality. But we, 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 we might be. It's approved, and we'll <laughs> yeah. pay, we'll do that. So, okay. So we had a motion for five thousand for the total, James. That wasn't my motion. Oh, it, it's mine and oh, Bob and Bobby seconded it. Yeah. Okay. And was it for five? Yes. yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. So a motion and a second. No more discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes for them. And these other two, Madison, I'm going to have you work with them to revise these and get us back mm -hmm. on the schedule. Springtime in the Ozarks probably needs to come up at our next event, though, because they do a lot of advertising over yeah. the holiday. And, and they're okay. huge. They, they are huge. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and a very a, popular event in town. Yeah. Not, that's not saying we don't want to do it. It's just saying I think yeah. that we need yeah. Yeah. It's a little too soon, and I think I want you to work with them directly so you're sure. on, on board with that. Okay. So, um, Greg, uh, as you guys know, resigned, so we have a seat that's vacated. Okay. Um, I don't know of any new applicants that I'm aware of. No. Rick, we have any new applicants for that? Uh, so we have... No, we do not. We, we uh, have just the four that, have, that applied this year. So right. I would make a motion to uh, appoint Patrick Burnett to the vacancy. And Patrick is here. Would you accept that nomination? Oh, cool. Thank you, sir, for coming and being patient. No problem. I would. Um, don't feel like I got to, to finish the work that I felt like I could do. No, I'd you. like to I... get back on and do what I can do. I'll second that nomination. All right. Okay. Any, do we want to discuss I, this? I, I, I do. I do want to say a few things. So, you know, Greg moved and moved out of town, so he resigned, which was nice. Um, Patrick, I, I talked to one of the applicants today, Blair, and she at this time did not want to be considered but wanted it left. Um, Rodney was too busy to call me back, but I will talk with him. And Bill did not answer the phone. When I interviewed them a few months back, they were outstanding candidates, all of them. Each one of them would have brought something really good to the table. But Patrick brought the most, and that was why I voted for Patrick. And the couple months that we sat with him here, he was one of the best commissioners I've ever sat with. So I will definitely second that motion, or I will vote yes. Okay. I would reinforce that all the years I've been on the CAPC, he's probably the most qualified and capable <laughs> yep. person that we've had. Without a doubt. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? If not, um, let's just do an up or down. So all in favor? Aye. 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 
Any opposed? Okay, passes. You're back. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> the man. Um, it's got to go to the city council, and then we will receipt you. And then Rick is also, looks like, Rick, you're ready to retire and do whatever retire people do. We, <laughs> none of us know what that is, so will you, will you send us Facebook pictures and let us know what that's like? Even, even those of us who are retired don't yeah. really know what that's like. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, Rick is uh, retiring, and so we are going to need to start a uh, search, obviously, and we wish Rick all, all the best. Do you have a time frame? Uh, it's, it's, it's not like I'm leaving tomorrow. Um, this is just something I want to put in front of you because, as you know, the city just went through six months of trying to get a finance director, and um, that failed, so Lonnie's having to stay on. So. Right. I just want to get the wheels in motion to make this happen. Go. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, I you. got grandbabies that are growing really fast, and I don't that's get to see them near enough. So uh, that's just that's just uh, my story. Um, I retired younger, and then I took this job because I was bored, and now I miss my grandbabies. So um, y'all, you know, my job description has changed quite a bit since. Yeah. We last did it, so you might want to look at that and revamp it because uh, now we have a secretary, which is, does the job that was in my description and just other things. So it's something that you probably ought to start working at and maybe get out there um, to get some applicants coming in. Okay. So, yeah. um, Do we have the option of... Um, Having an outside yes. company do yeah, this. We do. Yes. Yeah. So we could. There's a couple things we could do. We could hire an outside independent company to come in and give us quotes. Um, we could hire an intern, and that brings me. I pass this around. Mm -hmm. This is Scott Barden. Y'all know him. He lives here in town. Um, he owns property right, right. here on, he's, on Maine. He he's is, on parks. Wasn't he? He was a bookkeeper for the state of Louisiana. Well, he. Some of his resume is here. I. I he came in, met with me, and said, yeah. "Hey, Jeff, I would." work part-time he believes that he could do just the bookkeeping keep, part as a part-time at $25 an hour and he would not be a, uh, he would not be our permanent hire unless we decide to move that way he would be an intern so he would come in and he or an interim and he would come in and he would get us between Rick and the next okay step so so right. could we hire him temporary to start working with Rick yes. so that we can we can start moving in the direction we need to move. That's right. We, we can hire temporary. Yeah, we could hire him temporary, and then we could go ahead and put out the process, whatever we decide, if we want to bring in quotes from individual companies, yeah. or okay. do we want to bring in a, a candidate. You know, all that's going to, like Rick said, that's going to take time. Yeah. But we could do this temporary uh, position that's part-time mm -hmm. that would come in and transition us properly between now and the time that it takes. I, I, I do know him. I mean, we're not friends or anything. I, I respect him. I think he's a very honest person. So I think we need to start moving. So I'm going to make a motion that we hire Scott Barden temporarily to as an intern. To familiar himself with the books while Rick's still here, right? Yeah, yes, yes, just as an intern. And you're okay, he requested 25 an hour. With yeah, that, that would, that would, that seems very reasonable for it the does. keeper. Um, he's not interested, he's, he's retired, so he's not interested, he doesn't need any bit of fence or any of that, so I've asked him to keep his hours under 30 a week, if this were. So it would be under 30 hours a week yeah. at $25 an hour, and he would transition us into Rick's retirement. Mm -hmm. I have a concern that whether this is an interim position or not, that that person um, has a security check, particularly if they're handling cash. How much cash do we handle, Rick? We rarely ever have cash other than when we do an auditorium show. Um, everything we do is by check, but it is required um, to have my position or work in, in my position to have a background check done. Okay. Um, and do you need to be bonded as we well? We are bonded, but we're bonded through the city. The city's bond covers us. We don't have to buy our own bond, but we are bonded through the city, and you do have to pass a background we check. We can just get the city to do a background check like yeah. we've done it, with her. I mean, we're not getting a second on this one. I think we're a little uh, over our skis. He has Scott was not available tonight, so. No. Yeah. And Rick hasn't even given us an end date. We have the question, do we want to go with an accounting firm or do we want to hire 
what, what of financial. I, what I propose is this is just temporary to, to get us started because if Rick decided to leave tomorrow, what are we going to do? I, I could make the case that we hire an accounting firm tomorrow and have them do it. Okay. Well, we could. Hmm. So, moving forward, do we want to uh, put this in our next workshop? Sure. And, 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 and sure. maybe we could invite Scott, and maybe we could invite a couple of uh, firms to come in, and we just okay. do a workshop that yeah. way. You guys that, want to do that? That's uh, that sounds like a good idea. Get us, yep. because obviously, you know, we, if we, we, the sooner we start, the sooner we end. And so, mm -hmm. um, okay, we'll do that. I'll put that for our next workshop. Um, okay. That's all I have. Commissioner, comments? Start with you, Bobby. Do you have anything? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay. Harry? I'm just really tickled with the numbers. Uh, Paradise is working out for us real well. I think they're earning their money. And uh, I think Madison is earning her money, too. <laughs> James? No comment. I don't, I don't have any comments. Carol, do you have any comments? Um, nice job, Jeff, getting the ball finally rolling forward again. Um, welcome to Madison. Really glad you're here. And yeah, the numbers are really great. And Paradise isn't all of it, but they are a, certainly a big part of it. When you see a $16 return on a dollar investment, I want to invest in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to welcome Madison. She's been a wonderful addition. And I'm delighted at the numbers for the city. Also, I mean, those were sales tax, and, and that's 60% of our income in the city is our sales tax. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm excited to move forward with the auditorium and the, yeah. and the public works building. And with Larry. I'm done. Okay. You got a motion to go home? Yeah. So motion moved. to go home. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed to go home? Nope. Thank you guys very much and appreciate your patience.